good artists borrow, but great artists steal. And if Games Workshop was an artist, I would probably consider them one of the greatest artists of all time by that logic. But they are a corporation, and in my mind, that makes them in ineligible to be an artist in all rates. If you disagree with me, put an 8 emoji down in the comments. I will ignore you with my own simple emoji, maybe poop, on each of those emoji com comments. By the way, that is not legally saying they stole everything. They didn't steal anything based on copyright laws. Warhammer 40k is a pastiche of science fiction and fantasy, and what I mean by that is that it is an amalgamation of various different tropes, themes, settings, and sometimes even complete plot lines that have been subsumed into the overall story of Warhammer 40k. You even have factions that have been wholesale lifted from fantasy and plopped directly into a science fiction fantasy setting. You have the Space Elves, which became the Eldari that were the live elves of Lord of the Rings. You have dwarves that are dwarves, but just diminutive, and called squats, and went missing for decades. You also have orcs that became orcs, but British. So let's get into the real lore, hey, of these different factions and kind of give you an idea of what influences kind of came into these factions and make them what they are today. In particular, I want to go over the Adeptus Mechanicus because although they seem like one of the more unique factions that exist in Warhammer 40k, they in fact have a lot of different influences from outside fa franchises and design philosophies. So let's get into it. The Emek are likely one of the most unique factions within 40k. Their blend of cybernetics and monk robes cuts a silhouette that is not seen outside of the 40k universe, but there are influences to be found, particularly with their philosophy. They have a few theses that create the basis of their philosophy that we can highlight and find a running influence from other stories before Warhammer 40k was a twinkle in the British eye. 1. Knowledge is the most important resource in the universe and its preservation is paramount. 2. Their mind is the most valuable store of this knowledge. 3. Their flesh is incapable of preserving this knowledge and thus must be replaced with materials that do not decay. 4. This knowledge cannot be created. It must be discovered for the ancients already created it. And 5. Artificial intelligence diverts the potential of the human mind. These tenets, not direct canon, this is a summary, are their core and can be found in what is likely the greatest influence on Warhammer 40k and pretty much science fiction as a whole. Dune. Dune presents a far future setting where the potential of the human mind is the greatest power in the universe. Thousands of years before the story in Dune, there was an event known as the Butlerian Jihad that nearly destroyed the human race. The machine and artificial intelligences that they had created to aid them rebelled against them. Having been weakened from their reliance on that technology, humanity was barely able to survive and defeat the rebellious intelligences. From this, the survivors sought to improve solely on the human mind for calculations, navigation, and other potentially mundane tasks. Sounds kind of similar to the Men of Iron, right? Of course, the philosophy from Dune is perverted and twisted by the Dark Age that 40k exists in, as all things decay. Instead of simply using human calculators called Mentats in the Dune universe, the Admech lobotomize normal humans to mindlessly calculate what they need completed. And while the Dune universe harbors no idea of anthropomorphization of the dumb machines that they use, the Admech revel in the little intelligences that inhabit the machines they use. But the core of AI bad revel in the human mind is still present in the Admech. As for their tenet of all knowledge already exists, this has a more historical influence and from another major influence in science fiction, the fall of the Roman Empire in the Foundation series. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, a significant amount of knowledge in history was lost. There are still significant amounts of knowledge that this ancient empire knew that we can barely comprehend. Only in the last few years were we able to understand the exact chemical process that was used to make Roman concrete. This is huge simply because the concrete that we use in construction now has a lifespan in decades and needs to be replaced due to wear. Meanwhile, the Pantheon, which is a giant dome made of concrete with a hole in the center of it that is 46 meters tall, still stands with one itty bitty crack in it from an earthquake centuries ago. Even some of the knowledge that we have had over the last couple of centuries was only really rediscovered in a period known as the Renaissance, which I'm sure if you did any amount of art or any normal history, you know what the Renaissance is. It's when we had a great burst of art and philosophy and technology when everything started to get columns and arcs again, simply because they were rediscovering this knowledge that had been lost. 
So this idea that a once great empire in the past had more knowledge than we do, and that knowledge is lost and must be found, bled its way into science fiction. The Foundation series, written by the great Isaac Asimov in 1951, details how a similar empire reached galactic dominance and fell. And instead of allowing all that knowledge to be lost, it was the titular Foundation that sought to maintain it through the coming Dark Age and ensure that humanity could rise again. Again, similar to the way that AI is bad, human mind good, that was from Dune, these ideas are twisted through the dark lens of 40k to show how we can be enslaved to the idea of the past instead of working towards a future. This premise of our darker instincts coming out is a central tenet of what makes 40k 40k. Nothing is always going to be bright because there are great darknesses that exist within the human spirit and the human mind. And this is just going far enough into the future where those dark impulses have taken over and become gods. But the idea of things being brought back from the past into the future actually comes up with the tech that the AdMech uses and the design philosophy that was used to create the model lines. And this is a whole section of design basically around retro futurism. And while the AdMac may seem sometimes at odds with the aesthetic of the setting as a whole, given the high technology looks of the Space Marines or World War II aesthetic of some Imperial Guard regiments, it makes sense given what we know already about the AdMac. They are the ones that are delving into the past, looking at what technology was and what it would look like in the future and making that in the current time. This is a paramount to this whole retro futurism, which comes from the 1960s, or even diesel punk, atom punk, steampunk, or various other punk mindsets. In a design delve by the actual designers of the Adeptus Mechanicus, they go over the idea that most of the tech that the AdMech use are byproducts of incomplete records. They are simply pulling from very, as many different sources as possible to not create something new, but to make this amalgamation of what technology they currently have. It fits with their kind of madcap idea of technology and what is in the past is futuristic and to gleam it from the wild ideas that these Adeptus Mechanicus Magos have. So the retrofuturistic vibes make sense with that in mind. It's a style that looks at what technology would be through the lens of the past, which is where we come to steampunk, diesel punk, and atom punk in particular. And although we do have things that are Da Vinci drawings made manifest, like the Archaeoraptor or the Taraxi sterilizers, or I'm probably saying something wrong there, but they are look like they're just drawings from Da Vinci, but somehow these mad lads with a void dragon beneath them decided that these things fly, let's go. Now going to the hodgepodge of punk influences, you have the steampunk, which is a view of what technology and future technology would look like from Victorian age with clockwork influences, pipes and steams, which you actually see on the engine sears, magoses, the rust stalkers, and a few other things where it's built from what looks like cogs making things move. And then you have the atom punk influences from the Catafron Breachers, where it looks like it's a 1950s robot, kind of a little bit more big and chunky with machine that's going to be dumping out radiation because in the 1950s, we thought it was a great idea to make everything irradiated, which goes really in the influence of the army itself on the tabletop since you just dump radiation all over everything and make everything suffer and give everything cancer. And then you have the diesel punk influence, which comes mostly from World War I aesthetics, but it's hydraulics and bare machinery that are just pure industrial warfare. So you see that with the Iron Striders in particular. So the AdMech seem like they are one of the most unique aspects of 40K, but it is simply because they're taking from so many different influences to kind of hodgepodge it together and amalgamate it into what you see on the tabletop, which also fits their own philosophy, since if you look at the tech priests, they are not just simply a human. They are not one influence. They are mechadendrites and cogs and guns everywhere. And the gun, the, they're using treads because they didn't want their legs anymore. So it's a hodgepodge of all these different technologies slapped into one human being and said, here we go. This is unique. 
this is what makes 40k fantastic because even though it is basically taking from all these different influences, it doesn't matter because it is taking all these things together and making something unique that we are drawn into. We can see familiar things there that we're okay with and are somewhat nostalgic with, but we get something new and we get something interesting. Great art is great because it steals simply because it is working from a foundation of what was into something better. And that gives you an idea of the real lore of the Adeptus Mechanicus, where their design philosophies come from and where their influences are in science fiction and the real world in general. Next time I will do the Adeptus Astartes because you have to do the Space Marines if you're talking about influences from outside of Warhammer itself. That's all for today. If you liked this video, like and subscribe so that way this video can go to other places and other people can find it and who knows, maybe I could be as big as Major Kill. I don't doubt it, I doubt it. Australians win, Canadians are meh. But like and comment, I'll get to you. Emoji with emoji, let's go. That's all for today, cheers.